Welcome to Rachel Scale Modeling. This is part six of the Airfix de Havilland Sea Vixen 148. Um, in part five, I I put on the the paint and uh, done the decals for the weapon system and drop down. Um, so now I'm just going to be taking the masking tape off. So I expect there'll be some more paint work to done to be done. Yeah, a bit of paint came off there. To stop that, you can vanish before you put the mask and tape on. Um, if you want. But it's also a good way uh, to do some chipping. I'll just carry on taking this off. And then we'll get on to the next part of the build. So as I suspected, there was a couple of paint lifts on, on here. So I'm just repainting them and I'm using the same colour, which is Revo Aquacolor 04 Gloss White. And um, so I'm just touching up the paint, just a thin coat again, building on of the layers. I won't take uh, as many coats obviously because it's only the top layer that's lifted off. So th there is a, c a couple of um, part bits to do, um, they are where just pointing. But um, as I said, it doesn't take long just to repaint it. Now it's time to put on the decals and I'm going to fast forward this bit. There's a couple of ways you can approach putting these decals on, uh, putting the main ones on first, or the little ones. Um, either way, look at your instructions to make sure there's no overlap. I've decided to put on the little ones first, just because there's that many of them. And there's no overlap on these decals, which is good. So um, you can start where, where you want to really. You don't necessarily have to put them all, all on. It depends on what sort of rep representation you would like. I decided to put them all on because I was enjoying the kit so much. I don't often put them all on, but um, th this time I did. I was on the decals, a couple of them did break though. Um, I think I left them in the water bath a little bit too long. So just be aware of that if you haven't put decals on that much before. You, you don't want to leave them sitting in water for too long or they can not soften up too much. As well as if you're using an agent. So now I'm going on to the stand, and this is just a, a normal Airfix stand, and this one's designed for 148 and 124 um, size um, aircraft. You, you have to assemble this one, other ones you don't, but this one you, you, you do. So it's just a couple of parts together, and then glue them onto the base. Now, you can paint these whatever colour you want, or you can leave them black, um, it's a tile up to you. Uh, I uh, decided to paint mine white but before you do just check for fit like I'm doing there to make sure everything is going to fit because you don't want to paint it and then have to scratch off all your paintwork trying to get the thing to fit and before I put the decals onto the top half of the aircraft I'm just uh, penciling in the um, panel lines again like I said on the previous video a lot of people use washers for this I prefer to use a pencil there's no right way and wrong way. Don't let anyone tell you, oh, you must do it this way. You must do it that way. It's your model. Do it how you like to do it. And don't let anyone else tell you. You know, just have fun with it. So it's time to put on the top decals now for the upper part of the aircraft. And these are uh, put on the same way uh, as the uh, bottom ones. Again, make sure it's warm water when you're uh, softening up your decals. I tend to have two pots of water, one that's uh, boiling hot and one that's lukewarm. And by the time the lukewarm one goes cold, the boiling hot one is at temperature to put the decals in. But don't get them mixed up, you don't want to melt your decals. You know, some would actually be able to handle some decals, others wouldn't. So just be careful. When you're putting these decals on as well, look at the order you are going to put them on because you don't want your hands to be brushing against the model. Um, that on decals you've already done and you, you may move them. That That's just a, a little tip really so that you're not going to destroy the work you've already done. 
So I'm just coming up to the last decals now. And while they're drying, it's time to paint the clear parts. And, and this is Tamiya's X27 Clear Red. And this part's getting painted is for the tail light. Also, uh, the wings are locating location lights as well. Then moving on to X25 Clear Green. And uh, same again, the wing location light. To put them on, it was quite simple. Um, on the tail uh, parts, one has only got a light on it. The other one's just a, a blank solid state part that just fits into the um, recess point of the tail. A little bit tricky to get in because it is a small part, but um, it does fit in quite easily. Then it's time to put in the tail. Like this is the one that I painted uh, with the clear red. And um, like the opposite side, that just fits in you. Because it's a clear part, it's slightly outside sometimes, you may have to file it down or cut it. I, I was okay, I, I was able to push it in without too much fuss. Once those two parts are on, uh, it's just a matter of painting it in the um, main colour. So that's Revo Aquacolor 79 greyish blue. The next step is to, is to put in the two location uh, lights on the wing. So the red one's going in first, and this just bits, butts up against the wing. You shouldn't have any problems putting it on. And then the green one. I'll always say if you're doing this, make sure that your decals are dry or almost dry. You can see on the plane there are little spots where the um, solution is still wet, but the decals are actually dry at this stage. Enough not, not to poke at them and push them around, but you can brush it against them and they will not move. And then last to go on is the two probes on, on the wing. The, these are just fit in. There's a, a little o, o recess uh, in the house for these just to push on. Now, both of mine broke on the sprue. They're very thin pieces of spa, uh, plastic. So just be careful when you're taking them off. Um, but mine's were already broke, probably through transit. You know, um, so I just trimmed them up to the same length. It was only the tips were broken. Um, I hardly lost any length at all. So th that, that was good. But just bear in mind, if that does happen, um, to replace them, all you have to do is get a bit of stretch sprue. And that's just a piece of sprue, eat it up a little bit, and pull it until it's um, a diameter you want and length you want. Uh, I've done other videos on it, you can have a look at uh, that um, I've done it, but I didn't have to actually have to do it there. So I'm just uh, painting it now to uh, the same colour of the fuselage. Onto the weathering and I'm using Tamiya's Weathering Master D and I'm using the burnt red first of all over the engine. Uh, just uh, using my brush sharpener to um, spread it all over. You can put as much as you like on here, it uh, all depends on the user. Then moving on to the burnt blue compartment, uh, compartment of the Weathering Master set D and this goes over the burnt red and uh, what I do here is uh, just Generally lay it over, uh, when I put my brush down I press a little bit harder and flick it up um, to get a streaking effect. Bear in mind though, um, you want it also to streak in the direction of the aircraft that we're flying. So once you've got your overall cover done, then you can do it in a different direction just to simulate that airflow. So that's all done. So once your decals are dry and they have to be 100% dry here, it's time to put on your varnish. And I'm using Pledge Clear Varnish or Polish, it says on the bowl. And uh, I'm just uh, putting a little bit of coat on here with a big flat brush. Uh, make sure that um, it does go on even as possible. Well, I actually forgot to do a little bit of weathering that was, uh, was planned on doing. So I'm using Tamiya's Weathering Master B and I'm using the suit component in here and I'm just making uh, marks on the wing, streak marks and um, like I did with the engine I'm taking my brush sharpener and pressing down hard on the area to start with and flicking the sharpener up and um, that gives um, a two-toned effect as I've said before in other videos it has a deeper colour to start with and then tails off and that gives the illusion again of airflow going over the aircraft. Now you, you, you want to do this on uh, race parts that would uh, capture 
uh, dusting grime as, as the aircraft's flying and um, things like the aerofoils and things like that where uh, any dust particles would um, be um, thrown and hard, uh, punched to get to the side. It's, it all depends on what you want to do on it. I've only done it li lightly. If you have made a mistake, um, it does come off fairly easy as well. I'm just using a, a bit of tissue here because I put a bit, a bit too much on at certain points. So I'm just uh, blending it in. You can also do that with your brush sharpener as well. Um, it depends on, on the builder really. You know, whatever works for you. This is what works for me. Um, I also uh, put on a little bit on the decals as well because I, I don't like pristine clean decals. Well, I don't like pristine clean models anyway. I prefer mine uh, to show a bit of wear and tear. You know, even if it's just a little bit. So after a couple of minutes, I'm able to re-vanish. So I'm just uh, pulling uh, the varnish over the model again. And this time, I'm making sure, again, it's on the, the direction of the airflow. Now, the um, pigment may have slightly smear uh, if it's not 100% uh, dried or rubbed on properly. But that's okay, because that's the effect that I want. Like the graphic pencil, uh, I want it to, to bleed slightly into the paintwork to give that um, look of a used aircraft. So that's it almost dry now, it's, well it's dry and um, that brings the build to an end. Now I would recommend this kit uh, to everyone, even a beginner, even though it is um, highly detailed, there's processes in, in this kit that everyone would need to learn when they're starting out. So this is a really great starting point for someone uh, to do. To do. So all, all I've got left now to do is to fit the stand and um, and that's the hole that I made up near the beginning. So I'll just fit the stand, it will be a bit tight. And that click means it's in. Now I'm not going to actually glue it on the stand because uh, I may take it off at some point. But there we go. So I've got a bit of movement on the stand as you can see, that's because I've glued it on. This, the actual build took about 30 hours to complete, um, which is very good for uh, a build of this complex. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure other people can put more into the kit, um, but this is what I've came up with. So if you do want to see the rest of the build, and you haven't done so already, um, it's all there on the channel for you. There, there's um, many other builds for you to have a look at. You can subscribe to the channel f um, to see my future projects coming up. And um, if you liked what you've seen, click the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel, as I said, or leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.